G'day, here's something a little bit different. That's a project panel up top, some ready-made drawers, and of course, all held together with some pallets. Hope you enjoy. All right, g'day. Uh, so this week's sticker sponsorship shout out goes to James at Fix It Fingers. He's got a pretty cool channel, heaps of awesome videos on how to turn your battery power tools into other rad stuff you need for your shop, like a jointer, table saw, etc. Uh, thanks for the sticker, mate. And I'm now gonna build uh, this bench. So James is a very appropriate sticker sponsor. He's just built his workbench with 47,000 half laps. So I've got a heap to do. Uh, just remember, I'm not really a how-to, more of a how I do. I'm still learning, so be kind, but take it for what it is. Enjoy. So originally, this build was all, all gonna be about doing some mortise and tenon joinery. Uh, the plans changed completely and that was going to take far too long so I've changed it up to some half laps so I'm going to chop off all those tenons I made and give them the finger and crack on this way. So half laps it is pretty simple just use your stock mark it out and in the quest to get better I've bought myself a marking knife. Cuffy's woodwork would be very proud. I'm probably doing it wrong but I'm hoping he'll let me know if I am. Anyway, here's my routine. So table saw, I'm gonna do my cross cuts with the table saw, I've set the depth. I can cut all of those nice and quickly straight through um, top and bottom and then take them over the bandsaw and take out all the waste. It's awesome. It's an awesome routine and it's super fast. And the point of this build is to get the job done so I can get my wife all the furniture she needs and get her back into action as soon as she's allowed to. And again, as a time saving measure, I'm using a stop block as much as possible. Um, but what it's also doing for me is making sure that my lower edge of all this joinery is exactly the same height off the ground. So it is nice and square. So for the half laps where I can't use the bandsaw, um, I've cut both my cross cuts and then I'll take it over the bench. I'll grab the hammer and chisel and then I'll realize that's a shit idea, throw the mallet, then take it back over the table saw, run it through a thousand times to remove the waste, and then just use the chisel to clean out the joint. And that's about my mallet and chisel skills right there. And just like that. So it works, it's quick, it's easy, and it's effective. You get a nice strong joint, plenty of gluing surface, um, then you can crack on, build yourself a frame. So usual routine, a bit of glue, fancy glue brush, and glue it all together. Um, this time I've only got to give it a few love taps with the mallet, so it's uh, it's just about right. Um, we're gonna use screws as the, as the clamping mechanism, and again, that'll lock it in nice and tight, put it aside to dry, and we can crack on with the next step, which is this. Right, we need more timber. So I've got these four bits of pine um, off a pallet, and they are dead square for pallets, which is pretty good. Um, I'm gonna rip those down and I'm going to make my shelving um, for the midsection of this unit. Uh, so I'm gonna use the table saw, cut them to size and I'm then going to uh, do what I'm doing here, which is setting up the table saw height and width and I'm gonna cut a, what is it called? Rebate. Yes, it's a rebate, James. Um, and that's gonna save me doing heaps of extra capping. So this piece will do both the holding of the shelf and capping it so it looks nice and pretty from the front. You'll see what I mean shortly. So I've had a few cracks at doing this technique but never been able to get the table saw perfect so it doesn't leave this little strip um, in the joint but it's just a quick clean out with the chisel, a few love taps and a bit of a rub of sandpaper, and it's a beautiful piece of timber, ready to roll. And with the leftover two stretches, those uh, nice square bits of pine, I'm gonna rip those down and they are gonna form all my slats for these two shelves. Uh, they'll all be the same width, which is perfect, less sanding, and they'll have some nice gluing surfaces so it all goes together nicely. Alrighty, trim router. I am in love with this thing. So. Um, what I'm doing here is cutting a very small rebate. So lesson learned from the big ass bench is when I uh, start to wrap around these ready-made drawers, um, the drawers actually hit. So I'm just taking away a little bit off each side. So when they go up against the drawers like this, the drawers open and shut nicely like that. Perfect, lesson learned. 
Okay, so the drawers, these are the ready-made things. Again, I'm just going to um, screw them uh, to the framework that I'm making. So th this thing is going to get held in all sorts of other ways. Um, but this is a quick and easy way to dodge making drawers. And that's what I do, dodge drawers, because I'm not a fan at all. Alrighty, back to my shelving trimming. Again, got the marking knife there, getting very professional. Okay, I'm going to remove a uh, couple of little pieces of timber so that these this trimming slots into the vertical pieces. Now, this is all looking good in my brain at this point in time. So, loving it, getting me woodworking on. Uh, doesn't always go to plan, especially when you make it up as you go and you, you think you're all over it. Unfortunately, I wasn't. So, a la the next clip. All right, so today's lesson, or today's balls up. So, I've cut these out to slot in here. Uh, shelving then goes across the back. So, attempt one, I chopped out the wrong piece. Hello, dickhead. But I'm gonna have to salvage these to use on the bottom, which is gonna be slightly different. Bad luck. All right. Right, moving on. Uh, I'm throwing a bit of cladding inside, uh, that, which matches the walls of this place, and it's pretty cool stuff. Didn't get any good footage. All I did was screw it in. Righto. Okay, I've got to cut a heap of repeatable cuts for this shelf. So this is a little quick tip. Line the front piece up with the tip of your blade, then slide all the other bits in behind the blade. You need a sliding miter saw, obviously. Uh, square it off, cut it, boom, done. Then we can glue it into position, just like this. Alrighty, so gonna glue the slats in. So just glue, no screws. Um, the glue is as strong as 10 strong things. So check square as you go because you may just knock it out of square. Um, you may be OCD, so check square several times, obviously, as I will. Righto, um, plenty of glue. This thing is not gonna move. I'm very confident in that check square. Again, righto, dribbling shit, moving on. Okay, I'm gonna clamp it all down here. I'm gonna throw in some grease proof paper. Okay, just a little bit of squeeze out uh, would actually have me gluing those two bits together and it's gonna tear out when you try and separate them. Okay, so here's something new for me. I bought a piece of this project panel from Bunnings. Uh, it's not big enough, so I'm gonna rip it down, glue it back together so I can make it longer and wider. And I'm also gonna put a nice edge on it uh, just to make it look thicker. Too easy. All right, I've got the uh, trim router out again. So I had several iterations of this, a few test pieces to, to get it right. Once you've got the routine down pat, it's pretty cool. And there's a rear sighting of my lucky legs. Lucky they don't snap off and go up my ass, but I do have a massive melon, so it all it all counters out. It's all good. Right, back to the trim router. This thing is fantastic. I mean, for a little tool, it is super versatile. So I'm using it for all my biscuit joints, and I'm gonna use this thing uh, a lot more in the future. I've not used biscuit joints in the past. I've fully been aware of them and how awesome they are. And I am very happy that I've proven to myself just how awesome they are at leveling off everything as you clamp it up. Stops everything moving around. Um, speeds up the process and I dig it. It's gonna get, it's gonna get a hell of a workout in the future. Said that, didn't I? Moving on. Okay, here's the shelves going in. Um, Bit of glue and screw action, check square several times. Don't want these to be out of whack. I'm just gonna clamp it at the bottom. There's just some screws in from the underside, so that's gonna be more than enough again to hold this shelf up. It's only gonna be holding towels, but still, I don't want it to break. Okay, I've got a little bit more of this cladding. I'm just gonna do up some false kickboards here because uh, those ready-made drawers, they're not very high, so that's done the job nicely as well. Okay, back onto the trim router again, doing the rest of the biscuits. Um, I gave the dust collector the flick. So good idea, but they've got this screw right through the middle of the chute. Um, so you can pull the dust thing apart to get the dust out, but it's actually the screw that stops all the chips and it clogs up. So that was, that was a bit dodgy. Anyway, um, clamp all this bastard together and ready for the next step. So I am digging this um, project panel. Obviously didn't have time to make another gigantic slab out of pallet wood. So this is gonna tie into the shop pretty nicely. Okay, so 
with these panels though, they are made up of all the zigzag joinery. So when you rip it, you can see that and it looks a bit, looks a bit sketchy. So I'm just gonna cut a mitre and roll around that edge on the side panel. Um, just glue and clamp that on. It just makes the timber look a little bit nicer. Doesn't take much effort, but I dig it. Glad I did it. Uh, moving on, I'm gonna do the large piece as well. I'm gonna roll over about, I don't know, three or four centimeters. So it looks sort of chunky from the front. Um, so this thing's two meters long. So I had to stand back a fair way. Um, sort of pushing the table saw to the limit, but job done, that'll do. Okay, so I won't show you how I glued that one on, exactly the same process. I'm then just gonna rip this whole bench top down to size on the table saw, and then it's ready to rock and roll. Well, it's almost ready to rock and roll. Um, I've just gotta whip the end off, so just my normal routine is uh, just square off the edge, run it through with the circular saw, and job done. Okay, I gave it all a bit of a light sand. I'm now applying a stain and varnish, thinned down with terps. Uh, didn't, you don't really need the stain, but this is more just to tie it in with the rest of the furniture in the shop, just to give it that little bit of extra dark tone. Um, but it's worked out pretty nicely. Okay, so this is it. You can see that, just see that edge rolled over, so it looks like a chunky piece of timber. Um, Two meters long there, got a little bit of overhang, bin's gonna slide underneath that. So it's a pretty particular piece of furniture, but at the end of the day, it's just a bench or a buffet or whatever you wanna call it. But it's done, I like it, so is the wife. Okay, thank you very much for watching along. Um, please do subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks to everyone that has, It's um, it's been real good fun. And join in on the comments, that's, that's pretty cool too. Uh, my name's Mark. See you next time.